And in the first century, there lived a Roman poet by the name of Juvenal, who famously penned 16 volumes of satires criticizing Roman life of the day. Nearly 2,000 years later, the words of Juvenal remain ever relevant. Nemo repente fuit terpissimus. No man becomes evil all at once. Welcome back to the show, it's Gay For Me. And the Rise of Tyranny 2 pack takes us back to the past, where the seeds of conflict were sown. This maniacal multi-pack features a younger, more idealistic Megatron alongside the corrupt and conniving Senator Ratbat. Minor Megatron is perhaps the unassuming star of this set. Remolded from the original Siege Megatron, he features a newly sculpted head, chest, and shoulders. While the set is overall inspired by the Megatron Origin miniseries from IDW Comics, Minor Megatron himself is more specifically modeled after a later redesign by Alex Alex Milne. But it's easy to see how perfect this mold is for this version of the character. The figure looks nearly one-to-one -one with the comic art. I don't understand why IDW always gets to have super accurate figures when we can't have a big fat ass bulkhead, but I digress. Even details like the treads on his back have existed since the original release. And let's not forget the suspiciously similar head found on Generation Select's Combat Megatron. It seems like this version of the character was always in the cards. The simple but phenomenal deco is truly the highlight of the figure in my opinion. The dark grays and silvers remind Remind me of bare, unfinished steel. It feels soul-crushingly utilitarian, like a KFC uniform. I think the caution bars are a little on the nose, though. It's not quite the same as reflective PPE, but it's certainly more visually striking and gets across the point of express functionality. Perhaps the only representation of Megatron's true individuality comes from this red crest that's sculpted into his helmet. Overall, the deco is kind of depressing in a way but it perfectly reflects the life of the young Megatron, whose station in life was determined solely by his purpose. Until one day, the government who created this system in the first place sought to outmode the mining class, sparking Megatron's revolt. Megatron may be ruthless, but he started down this path out of concern for his fellow miners. Megatron loves miners. He loves working with miners. He loves talking to miners on the internet. He loves having sex with miners. Shockingly, despite the dirty, exhausting work Megatron does, this version of the figure is much cleaner than the original release. Siege Megatron went for a very G1 look, but had the polarizing deco decision to splash a generous amount of grime and battle damage onto the figure. And to my knowledge, there's never been a strictly clean version of G1 Megatron out of this mold. Maybe the closest being the 35th anniversary edition. This sort of grungy treatment wouldn't have been unwelcome on Minor Megatron, but I think I prefer his deco being more basic and plain giving us the most straightforward version of this design. Complementing Megatron's industrial aesthetics are a new set of accessories. He comes with a humongous drill, one that Megatron uses to reenact his favorite scenes from Gurren Lagann. I know which scenes are my favorite. And he also comes with this cool Energon pickaxe. You can disassemble them both and recombine them into this goofy-ass Power Rangers weapon if you want to. The weapons also play a pivotal role in Megatron's transformation, parts forming onto the chassis to complete his conversion into a drill tank. It's honestly pretty clever how they managed to keep reinventing this vehicle mode, the craziest, of course, being Shattered Glass Megatron's jet mode, but it isn't especially accurate to either the vehicle mode seen in Megatron Origin or the later updated design. A few of the mold's old problems still exist, too. The neck panel could swing out too far despite having been fixed on the Earthrise version. He doesn't have wrists, either, and his hands are stuck at this weird angle. And on top of that, there's a common assembly issue with this figure, where his knees are flipped around, which gives him really unstable posture and can make him kind of prone to falling over. His knees are all wobbly, like he's been mining all day for prostates with his crotch-mounted pickaxe. I can look past these problems for the sake of how cool I think this figure looks, but Jesus Christ, Hasbro, I think it's time to retire this mold. Another quote from Juvenal comes from his sixth satire, Quis Custodiat Ipsos Custodes. Translated, it means, who guards the guardsmen, and has been famously referenced in many pieces of media. What happened to the American dream? You're looking at it. The phrase questions how those in positions of power can be held accountable. And one character who definitely possesses a level of unchecked power is Senator Ratbat. Now, I'm not going to dwell too much on Senator Ratness, as I've previously talked about this mold in my A Hero Is Born review, and my thoughts haven't changed. I really like the black and purple color scheme, though, and the retooling on Ratbat is surprisingly as extensive as Alpha Trion. It goes beyond a simple head swap, remolding his chest, shoulders, and parts of the alt mode, too. The new head sculpt is pretty good, evoking the bestial qualities of Ratbat's more infamous cassette body, the top of the head slopes forward like a snout, down to this toothed maw that encircles his face. His expression looks very cold and detached, but it always makes me smile because it reminds me of the polite cat meme. 
They've also molded Ratbat's big gaudy Mr. T necklace onto his torso, the center of which is emblazoned with the symbol of the Cybertronian Senate. By this time in the comics, the Senate had become a bloated, corrupt governing force, with Ratbat easily being one of its most deplorable members. Using his authority, Ratbat manipulated various aspects of the economy and held a vested interest in the automation of the Energon mines. He later financed Megatron's gladiatorial events with weapons, indirectly arming the early Decepticon cause. The big silly backpack is still here, but Ratbat wears a kind of a cape that fans out, so this could be the most appropriate usage of this kibble yet. I sense a bit of mold degradation though, as the tabs that hold the wings in place feel awfully loose on mine. The wings completely encase the figure when transforming to his hovercraft mode. We've talked about this before. Hovercraft alt modes are like participation trophies for Transformers, but at least he looks distinctly bow shaped. It's super slick, everything tabs together well, and there's another crisp Senate badge drawing your eye to Ratbat's incredibly well concealed head. You can slap his blaster on the side of the ship too. The funny part about this set though is that Ratbat never directly interacts with Megatron. He always uses Soundwave as a go-between, so arguably it might have made more sense to include him, or maybe even Sentinel Prime, who Megatron battles at the end of the series. But I think the reason they chose Ratbat was because of how he contrasts Megatron, both in the story and visually. Between his regal color scheme and his highfalutin appearance, Ratbat looks downright bougie next to Megatron, and I believe the most important thing that Ratbat provides to this set is that context. The life of Megatron is a tragedy. Despite noble intentions, the harshness of the system he sought to change pushed him to adopt violent means, which only reinforced his understanding of its corruption. Like Juvenal says, why must it try? I can't do the right thing. Only God knows what the future may bring. Actually, that may have been Juvenile, the rapper. This is not a perfect set by any means. The only perfect set that I know of is my sister's. Plus, 70 bucks feels a bit steep for two Voyagers, but it's a set that I find to be unmatched in both aesthetics and storytelling. And for that, I think it's definitely worth checking out. And if you want to see another video where I take on two guys at once, check out last year's A Hero Was Born review. But anyway, that's just my opinions. Please leave yours in the comments below. Bye-bye. And the retooling on Ratbat is... And the retooling on Ratbat... And the retooling on Ratbat... And the retooling on f nuts and the retooling on f <laughs> rat bed is a really hard thing to say for me.